Why do you do what you do? I think, I think at heart, I'm an entrepreneur, and I really enjoy creating new things that didn't exist before. So as an author, I'm creating a book and creating new knowledge to share with other people that, that wasn't there before. And at salesforce.com and in different side projects that I have, I'm creating new products for people to use, new technologies that didn't exist before. How did you decide to be an author? Funny that you should ask. Um, you know, I never thought that I would ever write a book, but it, it happened very serendipitously, which I found a lot of the best things in life do. Uh, what happened was about a year and a half ago, I, two, two events took place that really got me thinking about social networking and how we could use it in not just our personal lives, but in a business context. So the first thing that happened was I was back in Hong Kong, which is where I'm from, visiting with my grandmother, and she's really picky about food. The place has to be cheap, and it has to be delicious. So we were in this real small hole-in-the-wall diner in kind of the back corner of Hong Kong. You know, most people wouldn't even know it was there unless you were really, you know, true Hong Kong native. We are there, we're eating our kanji, and um, all Cantonese people in the diner, and speaking Cantonese, talking, and all of a sudden, you know, I hear... And out of the corner of my eye, I see these two older gentlemen. They're kind of sitting there in their wife beaters, and they have a toothpick hanging out of one side of their mouth, a cigarette hanging out of the other, and somehow still eating on top of that. It's a, a true skill. And I heard them talk about Facebook, and I, I, I almost fell out of my chair. And I couldn't believe that, you know, here I was, May 2007, in Hong Kong, the last place that I expected to hear about Facebook, someone is actually talking about it. They're not in college, and they're not in the U.S. So I thought, geez, you know, Facebook really isn't just for kids anymore. I think that we've hit, a tip, hit some sort of tipping point where it's now mainstream. And so that following week, came back to San Francisco, attended Facebook's first developer conference, and that's when the second aha moment took place. I was sitting there watching them unveil the platform and there were all these applications that came out like I like for music and super poke and photo slideshows and this and that uh, but there weren't any business apps these were all personal applications and you know working at salesforce.com I'm, I'm talking to companies all the time and the more that I thought about Facebook the more that I felt like it's just a personal CRM tool that people like me and you use to manage our contacts and manage our friends and different relationships that we have and so I went home that weekend, and over a couple of weekends, my friend Todd Perry and I, we built the first business application on Facebook. It's called Face Connector, originally called FaceForce. And what it does is it integrates Facebook with Salesforce CRM. So when you're inside Salesforce CRM, you're a salesperson, you pull up your account lead or contact record, you can uh, automatically pull that person, that individual's Facebook profile information and also who you know in common, who your mutual friends are, you know, obviously depending on what that individual's privacy settings are on Facebook. But now instead of, you know, a cold call, which is extremely impersonal this day and age, and you know, in the age of spam, people ignore calls, they ignore emails. If you can have some contacts and some common ground, that really transforms that sales relationship from kind of a one-sided type deal so then something that's much more mutual and much more focused on, on what makes sense for that person. And so um, I think it just got, it was a really simple application, but it got people talking about using social networks in these new ways and how potentially as business people we could rethink the way that we sales and market and be much more precise and much more geared toward a bi-directional relationship with our customers. So long story short, that application came out. I was invited to speak at a number of different conferences across the country and uh, met my editor that way and they pitched me on the idea of writing a book. I was flattered to be honest because I thought of myself again as someone who created product, not someone who necessarily wrote this book, but you know what, I, I felt like this book had to be written and we're in the midst of something that is not, it's not just about technology, it's a cultural shift, it's, it's really something that's sweeping across human relationships and the way that we behave and interact with one another. And so I, you know, the book had to be written and I felt like I was maybe one of the people who was qualified to do it. 
Who have been your key influences so far? I have so many key influencers. I mean, I, I really feel extremely lucky, uh, both in the quality and quantity of mentors that I've had throughout my career and, and throughout my life. Um, just a few that I'll, I'll single out just because, you know, especially in the last few years in writing this book and, and all the, the things that I've been doing and the ways that I've grown. Mark Benioff at Salesforce, he's, he really is one of those leaders who leads by example. Uh, his generosity with the people who work for him, you know, his support on my book while as an employee here has been phenomenal. I mean, not only, you know, being okay with the book, but actually going so far as to, to write the foreword and to really be actively engaged and um, at the book's completion last month, offering me a new role and team focused on social networking. I, it's just been an, a pleasure and honor to, to work with people like him and learn from people like him. And I would definitely say, you know, prior to Salesforce.com, I was at Google, so Shona Brown was a great inspiration to me there. I worked for her, and um, before that, Tom Byers and Tina Seelig at Stanford, they continue to be really strong role models in my life. They're, they're real entrepreneurs and innovators in the education space. And um, last one I'll just mention is uh, Peter Fenton, who's a partner at Benchmark Capital. He's been just really great in terms of helping me think about my career and, and think outside the box of, of what's possible and what opportunities I can pursue. Who are the women you look up to? Sure, women role models. I think um, people in our generation are very lucky because women like Sheryl Sandberg at Facebook and uh, Sramana Mitra, who's the entrepreneur and, and now a blogger, and Meg Whitman, who is at eBay, you know, they have blazed the trail for us. They've shown us what's possible. And in many cases, they've shown us that you can have it all. You can, you can have your job. You can have your family. You can be an entrepreneur. You don't have to fit neatly and squarely inside one box. You can do all of these things and, and balance and make it work. Any key moment you would like to share with us? I would say the, the main defining moment in my life was being an immigrant to the U.S. from Hong Kong. My family moved in the mid-80s, uh, about a decade before Hong Kong was handed back over to China from Great Britain, and nobody really knew what was going to happen, and, and I think my parents didn't want to live in an authoritarian state, and so we went for it, and we showed up in America, didn't really know English, didn't really have very much, and I think that process of of coming to a new country, that's really entrepreneurial because you know, the definition of entrepreneurship is pursuit of opportunity without regard to resource constraint. And we certainly had a lot of constraints. And I think you know, America has been one of those places. And in fact, I, I dedicate my book to finding the American dream. It's something that I, I really believe in, something that I've experienced in my own life and that I've seen in my family members. And I think that you know, that process, and it was, it was a really difficult process for our family, but it brought us closer, and it taught me a lot about dreaming, and it taught me a lot about, you know, just working hard and knowing that, you know, it doesn't always work out, but by and large, you know, if you're, if you're smart and you're, you're working hard and you're being creative, that, especially in a country like this, they'll give you that chance and you'll get your big break. Any advice for our members? I think the biggest piece of advice I would share is that so often the limitations we face in life are ones that we put on ourselves. It's when we say, okay, this is how things are, so we assume that this is how things have to be. I think earlier on in my career, I did the job that I was told. I mean, I did it really well, but I just, I didn't think that anything beyond that job was possible. And I think what, what creating Face Connector and writing the Facebook era have really taught me is that we can create our own destinies. And it doesn't matter if you're a woman or a man, it doesn't matter if you're you know, rich or poor or young or old, you can, the decisions that you make define your life and define who you are and define what's possible. And so when you think about what your dreams are, if you just go for them, and you're not always gonna get them, but at minimum you'll have a great learning experience. And you know, sometimes, once in a while, it'll work out. And that's how greatness is achieved, however you want to define greatness. 